Welcome back to the RipeWave Audio community, where we explore together all types of home audio systems from hi-fi to home theater. My name is John, and for this video, we are providing introductory details of the recently announced new Macintosh AV processors, how they fit within the existing Macintosh lineup, and relate to similar products from Lingdorf and Marantz. This video complements the RipeWave Audio AV Processor Receiver Buyer's Guide 2020 10-part series. This video digs a little deeper into the Macintosh processor details and includes their latest MX100 processor, which was announced after the series was completed. If you missed the AV Processor Receiver's Buyer's Guide 2020 series, I have provided the links for your convenience in the description. Macintosh launched two new AV processors in 2020, the MX123 in March and the MX100 announced at the end of October. Macintosh is an iconic brand with very loyal following. For me, Macintosh is best known for their amplifiers with their large blue meters, but they carry also a full portfolio, so complete systems can be put together entirely with Macintosh branded and styled components bearing their signature sound characteristics. The MX123 and MX100 are for those who seek to use Macintosh at the heart of their home theater and bring the total number of processors in the Macintosh portfolio to five. However, we wonder how long the MX122, introduced in 2017, will remain available as the MX123 appears to replace it. Also, the MX123 puts some pressure on their flagship MX170 processor despite being available for $8,000, which is around half the cost of the MX170. The MX110 comes in at $5,000 as a new entry level for those looking to step up to the premium Macintosh experience. The MX100 strips down the AV processor to a pure digital slim 2U size unit for simplicity and to conserve space. Both models apply the classic Macintosh design language, which has survived decades without much alteration. As such, no modern full color, uh, high resolution display on the front. A simple two line dot matrix display is there to present status details. Around back, the look is clean and organized. While the MX123 provides flexibility to support a wide range of signals, the MX100 is a simple HDMI or SPDIF uh, input with the XLR balanced as the only pre-outs. The new MX123 is similar and I have read reports that it is likely to have derived from the Marantz AV8805. Now we will see later on how I.O. accounts closely align along with the use of Odyssey Room Correction, the uh, AKM uh, DAX uh, common remote design, and a user interface that differs mostly by branding. A peek under the hood reveals that the similarities include some shared circuit board designs. With that said, there are also some noticeable differences, including the power supply and the fact that Macintosh MX123 is more focused and less of a Swiss army knife in the feature set department than the AV8805. Those that have auditioned both have noted that the MX123 has a clear sonic advantage over the AV8805, suggesting that Macintosh has followed through with a more premium execution despite using shared ingredients. 
The RipeWave audio take on why brands with capable R&D facilities may choose to outsource components and in some cases rebadge full duplicates of AV processors is because software development is much different than hardware development. We often see highly acclaimed speaker and amplifier companies struggle to incorporate software such as wireless and mobile apps as they try to produce more lifestyle oriented products. How often have we seen strong players in the market release buggy processors and receivers that frustrate the early adopters? Macintosh is known for reliability and lifetime support and it is understandable that they may want to align with proven technologies to keep that reputation strong. Another example of Macintosh pairing with proven technology is with their use of the Lingdorf Room Perfect uh, room correction software on the MX170 and MX160 models. However, we see evidence that Lingdorf has influenced these models in other ways as well. Similar remotes and the ESS DAX uh, and the power switch that has a distinctive red highlight around it, uh, which I haven't seen elsewhere. The web-based setup menus are clearly the same as well. As long as the quality, sound signatures, and support live up to buyers' expectations for Macintosh, the source of components and software should not be a concern. It does, however, point to alternative brands if the consumer is looking for lower cost options. As noted earlier, the MX170 launched in 2019 for $15,500 and is the flagship of the Macintosh AV processor range. The MX170 supports the most channels of processing at 16 channels and supports 9.1.6 speaker layouts. The MX160 is the oldest model in the lineup and dates back five years to 2015. The MX160 provides a lower cost 12 channel option for those who are not going to leverage the 16 channels of the MX170. The MX123 is the first new model of 2020. While the MX123 sits between the MX170 and MX160 channel wise, it does so at a lower tier in performance, which explains why the MX123 is almost $2,000 less than the MX160 at $8,000. The three-year-old MX122 stays in the lineup in the same way the MX160 does, as a lower cost 12-channel option to the newer model within the same tier. In this case, the MX122 comes in $1,000 under the MX123 cost at $7,000. The latest entry, the MX100, introduces a new tier of entry into Macintosh AV processors with a selling price of $5,000. Half the height of the other processors. It is ideal for those who only want to connect to the uh, latest equipment and, don't, and won't want to expand beyond 13 channels. As the manual for this model has yet to be posted, details are still coming in for this October release model. But it appears to be a stripped down version of the MX123. Or is it? Room calibration is divided between the tiers. 
The top tier uses Lingdorf's Room Perfect, and the second tier, along with the new MX100, uses Odyssey's Multi EQ XT32 with dynamic volume. Reviews of both room correction solutions suggest that these are positioned in the right tiers, as Room Perfect is generally regarded as superior to Odyssey. While the MX160 and the MX170 both have 16 pre-outputs, Macintosh only claims 16 channels of processing on the MX170 and clearly states that the support on the MX160 is limited to 11.1, .1, also known as 7.1.4. Similarly, the MX123 literature points out that it has an advantage over the MX122 as it adds two more channels of discrete audio, bringing the MX123 to 13.2. However, RipeWave Audio's research has revealed that the difference is actually greater, as the MX122 subwoofer control is really dot one, not dot two as promoted. Well, Macintosh provided two subwoofer outputs on the MX122, and we can see why they're claiming dot two. They are wired in parallel. MX123 brings true dot two subwoofer control to the range, giving independent controllable outputs. The MX123 and MX122 both provide legacy support for component and composite videos, not found on the other models, along with two output zones versus one on the MX. 170 and MX160. Now the MX100 has no analog inputs and therefore is lacking the moving magnet phono input found on the other models. If your amps don't have balanced XLR inputs, you will need an adapter cable to pair those amplifiers with the MX100. Looking at the audio processing more carefully, we see that all models support Dolby Atmos and DTSX decoding, with speaker configurations ranging from 7.1.4 to 9.1.6. As with most premium brands, Oral 3D is supported on the MX122 through MX170 models with either 10.1 or 11.1 setups being supported. The MX123 stands apart as the only model currently advertising DTSX Pro and IMAX enhanced support. So far, there is no evidence of the MX100 supporting IMAX Enhance or Oral 3D. With only 12 channels, the MX100 does not require DTSX Pro support. Note that this table, along with the others moving forward, um, we have included data for the similar Lingdorf MP60 and Marantz AV8805 models for your own comparison. While not indicated on the Macintosh literature, our research has found that the DAX digital to analog converters, um, which are most likely used in each model. The top tier MX170 and MX160 uses the ESS Saber ES9018 DAC, while the second tier, the MX123 and MX122 use the AKM4490 EQ chip. So far, there is no data available for the DAC used on the MX100, but we suspect it will match that of the MX123 with the use of the AKM4490 EQ chip. Interestingly, the chips match those in the corresponding Lingdorf and Marantz models. 
We want to point out that the ESS and AKM chips are more capable than implemented into these products. While both chips support 32-bit, 768 kHz PCM and DSD-256, the Macintosh processor data sheets report only 192 kilohertz, 24-bit uh, playback and DSD-128 or lower when that specification is included in the literature and it's not included for each model. Nevertheless, the general specification of the ESS Saber outperforms the AKM chip and aligns with the two product tiers as expected. Macintosh has yet to produce a model with support for HDMI 2.1. With all models supporting the baseline HDMI 2.0 standard, Dolby Vision 444 subsampling HDR10 hybrid log gamma HDL support and provides uh, and is providing this consistently across the range. Lingdorf recently added HDMI 2.1 support to their MP60 so we wonder if Macintosh will add support for HDMI 2.1 in the near future uh, to at least the MX170. For connectivity, each model provides a wired Ethernet port. With Wi-Fi and Bluetooth being limited to the MX123 and MX122. So far, the MX100 shows no support for wireless, which we find odd for a new processor positioned for simplicity. Perhaps the MX100 is derived uh, from the MX170 and not the MX123 as suspected. With wireless support, the MX123 and MX122 support Apple AirPlay, and the MX123 also supports AirPlay 2. Unless Macintosh is keeping it a secret, no unit seems to support the same level of streaming services as Lingdorf or Marantz. Trigger outputs exist on each model, but which control IP or serial protocols are supported isn't always identified. The MX123 and MX122 uh, data sheets do list, uh, or web page, do list Control 4 and Creston with confirmed compatibility. Macintosh has most of the setup process handled through a web page. The Odyssey configuration may still be an on-screen display if the manual is correct. It just seems a little odd that they would split configuration functions across two separate interfaces, but this may be a limitation of Odyssey. Where Macintosh is behind the times is support for mobile apps, as no resource today is reporting this capability. We even checked the iOS App Store and could not find a Macintosh app for any of their processors, only uh, those for the RS200 loudspeaker updates, phone-based music streaming, and the MB100 media bridge. In conclusion, the Macintosh line of processors is designed to provide the premium Macintosh experience to home theater installations. There are two clear tiers in the portfolio, and each is believed to be derived from a different third-party partner. Despite licensing technology from third parties, we believe that Macintosh maintains their brand values for classic styling, signature sound, and outstanding support through the life of the product. With that said, this range may not, not be for those seeking the latest feature sets. It is for those who want a solution that delivers a premium sonic experience. It would be interesting to compare uh, with the likes of Storm Audio and Trinoff. While we know that Macintosh can't check all the same boxes as those dedicated home cinema brands, those brands don't come with the same heritage and owner loyalty. 
the MX-123 and MX-100 filled the gaps within the range nicely. The arrival of the MX-123 creates uh, an interesting situation as it comes close to or surpasses the feature sets available in the flagship MX-170, but likely does not match the MX-170 in its performance, including the RoomPerfect correction software, making it difficult for buyers to choose a path. Perhaps the MX-170 will enjoy some updates in the near future, making it once again the clear flag bearer in the range. The MX-100, we believe, will do well as many modern enthusiasts are seeking simplicity and compactness, but want to say they have a setup that is more than just a mere soundbar. We would also like to see Macintosh deliver mobile applications, and outsourcing of these would be perfectly fine as long as Macintosh sets the design criteria to their standards. It will be interesting to see how well this video on the new Macintosh processor models and the Macintosh range does in comparison to the RipeWay video on the new Anthem processor uh, range. The MX100 was announced the same week as the new Anthem line, but has received um, almost no YouTube activity. While Anthem discussions are very active, um, yet overlap uh, in price points uh, to the same degree, albeit uh, at a higher cost per channel for Macintosh. If you are considering one of these new Macintosh models, we would appreciate hearing your feedback. Uh, please include in the comments section, are you loyal to Macintosh or do you prefer Storm Audio and Trinoff? Are you married to the Macintosh styling? Or is Lingdorf fit better for you? Are you seeking the Macintosh sound signature? Would you rather save several thousand dollars and opt for a Marantz model? That feedback would be useful to the RipeWave community. Furthermore, if you enjoyed this video, and are interested in enhancing your audio experience, please like and subscribe to this RipeWave audio community and be sure to select the bell icon so you'll be notified as soon as the next video is posted. And for all the subscribers and all that are listening, whether you're in the United States or anywhere else in the world, we are thinking of you during this Thanksgiving se season. And we're very thankful for your, you listening to this channel and being a participant in this community. It's so wonderful that we can reach out and work together. Until we meet again, keep evolving your audio experience.